One topic which above all else gets asked to me over and over again is, I got a meta offer, how can I prepare myself before joining? Regardless of the level, people want to know how to hit the ground running when they join the company. What things they can do now in between jobs? What technical skills should I learn? What mindset shifts are required? Answering this is a bit tricky because so much of what Meta does is proprietary to the company and there's really no good open source equivalent to point people towards. But I certainly can talk about the high level things that someone can do to prepare. What are the habits that make someone successful in ramping up versus someone who gets bogged down and never really finds their stride? Before we get into the list, just a kind reminder to like the video, subscribe to the channel, it helps me know that you're enjoying the content and allows the algorithm to show it to more people. We just crossed the 30,000 subscriber threshold and I would love your help to get to 40k. Thanks for your support. Okay, let's now get into the discussion. Let's break this down into two pillars, technical and behavioral. Many people ask how do I get up to speed with Meta's tech stack so that I can be productive when I join? The answer to that is an underwhelming, eh, it depends. The problem with Meta is that a lot of tools are proprietary. You can see that we have our own version of PHP called Hack, and you might think it's a good idea to learn this language. But the problem is that it's basically impossible to do anything with the open source version of it, as there's really no frameworks or libraries for it. Without it, it's really impractical to do any sort of web dev stuff that the language is actually intended for. So if you're joining a team which will use Hack, don't feel like you have to learn the language inside and out. You can check out the docs to familiarize yourself with the basic syntax and language constructs. I even have a 10 minute video which goes over basically everything you need to know to actually understand Hack. Everything else you'll quickly learn on the job, so don't really feel any pressure to learn it. If, on the other hand, you're going to be a product engineer, then you very much can familiarize yourself with three other open source offerings from Meta. The first, and most of you will already have some sort of experience with this probably, is called React. But if not, it's definitely a good idea to brush up on it. There's a ton of demos, guides, tutorials, and videos for you to follow and try to build some simple application with. This is definitely a must know if you're on the web dev side of things, although most of you have probably already heard and used React in the past. The next two are GraphQL and Relay. So Relay is the client side library that you'll use inside of React to interface with your GraphQL endpoints. While GraphQL is relatively simple to get to grips with, it can be quite tricky to understand how to set up your own server and query from it. At Meta, you'll basically exclusively do this in Hack, but it could be a good experience to try to set one of these up in a language of your choice. There's many good guides on how to do this with JavaScript or Python, so find one, follow it, and try to get to grips with the basics of GraphQL. Relay, on the other hand, is actually quite hard to understand and use. On the surface, it's quite simple, but learning the ins and outs can take a very long time, and it's quite confusing. It doesn't really help that the library is very opinionated and forces you to do things in a very specific way that aren't always clear when first starting out. My suggestion would be to build a dummy application where you have a GraphQL server backend, a React application on the front end, and use Relay to actually query that server and you know render the information you get from the server. This will give you a good exposure to what full stack development is at Meta, and you can have some experience before coming in. It's definitely been on my bucket list to make a video series about how to actually learn GraphQL and Relay, and if I can find the time, I'll definitely like to make those videos, but for the time being, you'll just have to read the documentation and power through some tutorials to the best of your abilities. For those of you going into infrastructure roles, then definitely have a chat with your hiring manager about the tech stack that the team uses and determine if there's any sort of open source um, version of it or alternative that you can look into to prepare yourself. For example, if you're joining a C++ team, then you might find some value into looking into the Facebook Folly open source library as that's quite heavily used. Regardless of the team that you actually join, there's, there are two technical skills that you can develop. Um, and the first one would be a basic understanding of how to handle big data. At Meta, we use a distributed querying system called Presto. It's essentially the same as SQL, but with some new functions and powerful utilities. There are some open source documentation you can read to get a gist of it, and I'll leave links in the description down below. Another key skill you might need at some point is the ability to write data pipelines. At Meta, we have a system called DataSwarm, but the closest open source equivalent would be something called Apache Airflow. It's how we define data pipelines, and you'll frequently end up doing this to extract data from a larger data source, transform it somehow, and then create a new data artifact for your particular use case. Even if you aren't a data engineer, it's still a great skill to have. If you're on the mobile side, then of course checking things out like React Native and some of the open source packages for mobile development are also a good shout. Don't want to spend too much time here because there's 
just way too many things to discuss and there's more topics on the behavioral side. With that said, let's also now shift gears and discuss the mindset shifts and just the general approach one should have when actually coming into meta so you can better understand the culture. Being successful at Meta can often be tricky for new joiners. There's just so much information to digest and a whole new way of working that one needs to get used to. I'll try my best to compile a list of the main things one should be aware of and try to do, but of course this video would be hours long if I did everything that came to mind. I'll try to keep the content short and concise. Once you're in and exposed to the Meta environment, you can at least use these topics covered here as a guide of what to do next or just what to be aware of. The first item is to leave your previous company at the door. One issue that holds people back when they join Meta is that they can be a little too attached to how they did things at their previous company. Now, I'm not saying you can't bring any of that experience or any of your old work habits with you, but just be very mindful that Meta has a very particular way of doing things. In general, things are quite unstructured and chaotic. Don't expect things to always function as a well-oiled machine because the reality is far from the truth. Don't be rigid in your mindset during the first few months. Have a flexible mindset and learn what works and what doesn't. If you find that your approach is getting way too much pushback or friction, it might be wise to change tack and do things the meta way. Don't try to force your previous experience or ways of working on others at meta. Of course, you can always draw from past experience, but don't blanket assume that everything you used to do will just work here the same, because it won't. The second item is to learn the best practices and follow them. Building on point number one, it's important to quickly learn the best practices and start adhering to them. This is left purposely vague because best practice here can be in the context of coding style, interpersonal relationship management, writing design documents, you name it. Your team and your org will have a prescribed way of doing things. The faster you get to grips with this and adopt that particular working style, the better. It will allow you to speak the same language as your peers, so to speak, and don't get constantly nitpicked about what you're doing and trying to get you to conform to how everyone else is doing things. Next up, and in a similar vein, is because most of you are software engineers, please try to adhere to the meta coding style. For technical roles, it's especially important to fall in line with the coding style expected of you. The main thing here would definitely be to come to grips with the principle of stacked diffs Instead of doing one un quote unquote big ass pull request, we at Meta prefer to submit multiple smaller diffs, which when stacked upon each other, then make up the whole. People will frequently request changes on your code if defs are getting too long and hard to review. So get in the mindset of doing this early on. It makes it easier for everyone involved. Also, please make sure that you align with the expectations for code styling and testing expectations. Each team will have their own approach to this and just stick to it because the earlier you can get on board with this, the less friction there's going to be. The next item on the list is to understand how PSC works and the culture around it. One of the worst things at Meta is the PSC culture. And for those of you that don't know, PSC is basically our term for performance evaluations and it's essentially universally hated. The thing you need to understand is that Meta, it's all about selling yourself and your work. Unfortunately, what this means in practice is that people are constantly trying to big themselves up and really only doing things for the sake of PSC. Even if something is theoretically important, like for example, refactoring bad code or writing more tests, it usually gets left by the wayside in favor of more quote unquote impactful projects. Impact is a term that you'll hear thrown around a lot, and it's basically the currency of performance evaluations. Everyone is trying to rack up as much impact as possible so that their head isn't on the chopping block after performance evaluations are done. You should be aware of this PSC culture and make it an objective of yours once you're in to learn what the evaluation criteria is and then make a solid plan for how you can meet expectations across the four evaluation axes. Your manager and the more senior ICs on your team can definitely help guide you, but you do need to understand that you need points in each of the categories to be safe. So always keep that in mind and try to tie everything that you're doing to one of the four evaluation axes. If it doesn't align or doesn't help your PSC, then probably you should forget about it. Next up on the list is to learn your tools. One thing that you'll realize once you join Meta is that we have an overabundance of custom tooling. It seems like there's an internal tool for everything that 
tries to plug some gap that exists. Expect a new tool to just come out constantly solving tiny problems people didn't even know they had. Part of this is the hacker spirit of the company, and the other half is probably people trying to get PSC points. Either way, there's a ton of tools to get familiar with. Luckily, the big ones that everyone uses are quite high visibility and high traffic, so you'll invariably become familiar with them real quick. Once you're able to establish which tools are essential to your job, learn how to properly use them and leverage the advantages they bring to your workflow. If you'll be interacting with these tools often, it pays to know how they work and how you can leverage them to increase your productivity and your input. The penultimate one on the list is to invest in your relationships. While Meta is a tech company focused on engineering, it's important not to lose sight that the fact that interpersonal relationships are still very important. Fostering relationships with the right people is crucial for your long-term success at the company. You'll need the support of your colleagues to deliver successful cross-team projects or to support your promotion case, for example. Making sure you have the right people in your camp is a skill that you need to develop and actively work on. I'm not saying you need to be best buddies with everyone. Trust me, there are so many people I smile and make chit chat with on a daily basis that I cannot stand. There are just going to be people who are absolutely useless, incompetent morons, but you still need to deal with them. There's gonna be assholes who seemingly want to fuck you over at every single point where you turn your back. You need to learn to manage these relationships and not let them burn to the ground, while at the same time, fostering the ones with people who you can actually work with and achieve something with. You'll quickly realize the difference between people who are there to actively collaborate and you can have a successful smooth partnership with and those who are just out for themselves and will stab you in the back at their earliest convenience. Especially for junior engineers, it's quite hard to make this distinction due to lack of experience. But with time and with many bad experiences, you'll quickly learn to see people for who they are. A good re working relationship should be as smooth and without friction. Both parties have a vested interest in this being a win-win collaboration. It shouldn't feel like one side is only taking and not giving nothing back. Figure out the people who you can actually work with and stick with them. Foster that relationship, build on it half over half. Pick projects with people you know you can deliver with and they will not let you down. Otherwise, you're swimming against the current and will only make your life harder than it needs to be. The last item on the list is to give it time. I just want to say that being successful and ramping up at Meta is not an easy or a quick process. It takes time. Unless you're a returning employee or a returning intern, don't expect to be able to quickly ramp up to the culture and the way of working in a short time. It will realistically probably take you 6 to 12 months to fully hit your stride. Don't set sky high expectations right away. Don't think that you're going to come in here and be promoted the same year or get a very high performance rating your first evaluation cycle. It will take time to learn how the system works and how you can play the game properly. There's so many factors outside of your control that stressing about hitting the ground running and shining brightly from the start are just unrealistic. Of course, do your best, but focus on understanding your role and responsibilities. Formulate a solid, sustainable plan for your first half and then refine it with your manager and have regular check-ins to make sure that you're on the right track. Establish a solid foundation and set yourself up for future success. Don't try to boil the ocean right away, it will only end poorly. Choose a steady pace and try, instead of trying to sprint right out the gate and losing steam quickly. Remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Okay, with that, I think I'll wrap up the video here. There's, of course, so much to discuss on this topic, and I could just go on for hours and hours. I hope you enjoyed the video and perhaps learned something new. Thanks again for watching to the end, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.